We have to learn the art of actually watching ourselves. What are we doing? And pray to Krishna. Krishna is the person who gives us the strength and he's the one who actually sustains us. Book distribution is a teamwork. It's not just about you and your result and your score and your sadhana and you going back home back to God again. Because up there there's a lot of people, you know, and you got to fit in. Like they're going to ask you, okay, who are you with? Who is your Sankitan leader? Who is your, you know, who you work under? Oh no, I'm an independent operator. Okay, go back, go down. We don't take independent people. You have to, you have to work under somebody. Because up there it's very organized. Yeah. There's Srimati Radharani, there's, you know, the Gopas. They, they've got it all sorted out. So you can't just be freelance. You can't just move on your own. So you learn this art of working together with others and also working under somebody. Even if that person is younger than you. Even if that person distributes less books than you. Even if this person knows less verses than you. It doesn't matter. Krishna is pleased if you cooperate for the higher principle of spreading Krishna consciousness. What else, what else, what else? Yeah, triple A. Adhikar. You heard the word Adhikar? What's the Sanskrit meaning? Qualification, yes. And it consists of proper attitude. Huh? And attitude and altitude, they come together. Like they say, every bird flies on its own altitude, you know? So if you want to gain proper perspectives, if you want to gain proper altitude, you need to have the proper attitude. Huh? That's humility, sincerity, like Maharaj was saying today in class. You know, sincere, serious, and without ulterior motive. Like right now, many of you, because you're a bit spoiled here in this cozy environment of, you know, living in the Lord's place in a very lavish environment. So you're a bit spoiled by that. So we should actually all send you to Siberia or to Africa or, you know, to China or to some place where you have to face the harsh reality of material existence. I mean, just seeing the Mongol Swedes and, you know, the deities, and it's like you, you're spoiled. You're just spoiled. You don't know how to appreciate the good things in life because you take them for granted. What, another home program? Oh, you know, I'm still full from last night, you know? Uh, what's the venue? What's the menu? Which kind of vehicle are we taking? You know, Russia, they, they take the bus to go on book distribution. And it's minus 30 out in Siberia. It can be minus 50 out. And you walk from the temple to the bus station. And then you wait for the bus. And then you get on the bus, and you drive to town, and you get out on the street, and you distribute books. So here's the... Like, yeah, I'm not sure, you know, put the hand out. And <laughs> There's a drop of water. Huh? So you're all spoiled. Huh? So don't let all this opulence spoil you. Huh? Stay hungry. Huh? Stay hungry. Hungry for, you know, service. It's a question of sincerity of purpose. So then you can gain the proper altitude. If you want to gain altitude, like a plane on the runway, you can't just go cruising when you're on the runway, you know? You have to actually floor it and get the wind straight in your face and actually make it past the trees, past the mountains, past the clouds. And then, when you see the Krishna sun, then you can cruise. You still have to get to your destination, to your goal, but then you can cruise. But before you're past the clouds, you won't even get past the trees. So don't start just on a cruisy mode just because you think, hey, my life is good, you know. I've got my place to stay. I've got my plate here. I've got my place for my gumptions. You know, everybody likes me. Everybody respects me. I'm okay. You're okay. Everybody's okay. I do my little service. Everybody goes home happy. No. That's not what Krishna consciousness is all about. Otherwise, you've got to pack your backpack with 200 books and drop you with a parachute, you know, over Africa someplace. And see how long you last, you know, till you push that red button, you know, like the get me out of here button, you know. <laughs> Prabhupada went. United States, 200 sets of Bhagavatams, 600 books. For more than a year, he just lived on the sale of his books. 
Nobody maintained him. Nobody really helped him. He was 70 years old. And we're in our best ages, and our biggest challenge is how to find our spoon, you know? <laughs> or how to find our mobile phone. Huh? Or we're worried because we lost our password, you know, or something. That's our anxieties. He had real anxieties. There's no money. There's no help. There's no food. There's no place to stay. He had to move from place to place because people were just difficult. And you got stainless steel showers. You, know? <laughs> you got a locker room which looks like Buckingham Palace. Life is good. Maybe too good. That's okay. We shouldn't complain. Don't complain because things are too good. You got to get that edge, you know? You got to get the edge. If you want the edge, you got to get out on the street to experience that edge. Otherwise, if you're like, you know, why, why this is not sinking in? Why, I, why is this chanting and reading and associating not really penetrating my skull? Why is it not really touching my heart, my soul? Because I'm too conditioned. So we got to get past that conditioning by actually exposing ourselves our hearts, our souls, our identities to the Krishna factor. So don't be scared. You've got nothing to lose. Can't get any worse, can it? Can only get better, right? I mean, DP's down, you know, lost the championships. It's, yeah, the moral is a bit down. But that's good. The economy is down. That's good. Now people are eager, you know? They, they're ready to listen for a bit. They're not so proud, riding their high horse. So take advantage of that. People are looking for authenticity, truthfulness and happiness. If you've got these three qualities, people will be very anxious to take what you've got.